a model of a covered wagon I just finished so let me point out the features and for right now pretend that this is a real wagon and that you're in the market for one because you're going to be going out west on a wagon train if I were the salesman of this wagon first I'd point out the sturdy construction now it can carry over 4,000 pounds up front you've got your toolbox for all the tools you need to take along and along the side here you have an even longer toolbox for your shovels your rakes hose axes and on this side you have a 25 gallon water barrel now that should hold enough fresh water for about two weeks so all you have to worry about is what to take with you well first you're gonna need at least four good strong oxen to pull this wagon then you'll probably want to hang on to those pieces of furniture that have been in the family for a long time you'll need a hundred pounds of flour plenty of salt and dried meat oh and you'll need your pots and pans and your silverware and your dishes well, what are you going to do about the dog? It's best to leave pets behind when you go on the wagon train because they're always running off and getting lost. They're always getting in people's way, usually getting under the horses and the oxen and getting hurt. That's Lucy's problem in today's book, Trouble for Lucy, by Carla Stevens. Now, Lucy Stewart was moving with her family from Ohio to Oregon. That's over 2,000 miles by wagon train. And before they left Ohio, her uncle gave her a little puppy, and it seems from the very beginning that puppy was nothing but trouble. Now, Mr. Stewart was a stern man, and on the wagon train, he seemed to be even rougher, because he had more things to worry about than a little girl and her puppy. For one thing, Lucy's mother was about to have a baby, and the wagon train was a terrible place for a lady in her condition. There was all the bumping and the jolting, wild rivers to cross, steep slopes where the wagon might tip over. Sometimes it seemed like Mr. Stewart didn't even love Lucy, but she understood. She knew it's because he had so much on his mind. Lucy Stewart walked beside her farm wagon, carrying a small fox terrier in her arm. Every few minutes she stopped and tried to shift the wriggling puppy from one arm to the other. She sighed as she gazed ahead at the vast expanse of sky. A thin layer of clouds veiled the sun, already low on the horizon. I'm so wore out, I just can't hold you another minute, Finn, Lucy said. And she leaned over and put the puppy down. Now you behave, you hear? The black and white puppy squirmed out of her grasp and bounded ahead. Lucy? Mr. Stewart's deep voice carried above the creaking of the wagon wheels. Lucy, get that dog away from here. How often do I have to tell you he is not to go near the oxen? Oh, no, not again, Lucy groaned. Finn, Finn, come here. She lunged at the puppy, but he was too fast for her. Miles, she called, spying a tall, sandy-haired boy ahead. Catch Finn, catch him. Miles turned just in time to block the puppy's path. He scooped him up in his arms. Lucy ran toward them. Oh, thank heavens you got him, Miles. Whatever am I going to do with Finn? Oh, I wouldn't worry, Miles said. He'll learn to behave when he gets a little older. A bugle sounded. Miles handed her the puppy and broke into a run. I've got to help Pa. I'll see you later. Break line, came the call. Break line. Suddenly, there was a mix of new sounds. Lucy heard her father shout, Ha! in his deep voice, a signal for the oxen to move to the right. One wagon after the other turned slowly inward to form a big circle. As soon as their own wagon was in place, Mr. Stewart began unhitching the six oxen. Lucy put Finn down and ran to take the three heavy yokes one by one from her father and place them against the side of the wagon. Then Mr. Stewart hooked one end of an ox chain to the front wheel and the other to a wheel of the Abbott wagon alongside theirs. The wagons, linked together by the chains, formed a corral for their cow, Brownie, and for the horses and mules. Lucy, her father called, see that the chickens are let out, then bring me a bucket. Lucy looked around for Finn. 
for the moment he was off chasing a group of small boys. Oh, if only he'll stay away till I finish my chores, she thought. Lucy went to the rear of their wagon. Underneath, swinging from the axle, were two wooden cages. One held Rufus, their rooster, and the other held three squawking hens. Lucy bent over and unlatched each of the cage doors. Rufus and the hens half flew and half jumped onto the ground and began to peck at insects in the short grass. Ma had already opened a large chest at the end of the wagon bed and was taking out the tin plates and the cups needed for supper. Lucy tried to ignore the strained look on her mother's face as she handed her a bucket. Here, Lucy, her mother said. Give this to your father and I'll get the eggs. Suddenly, her mother stumbled in a tangle of puppy leaps and bounds. Lucy caught her just in time to keep her from falling. Oh, I'm sorry, Ma, I'm sorry. She frowned at the little dog who was jumping up and down. No, Finn, no. Oh, it was my own fault, Lucy. I was just not looking where I was going. Mrs. Stewart bent down and tried to quiet Finn. You'd better tie him up, Lucy. He'll be after the chickens again. Lucy took a rope from inside the wagon and tied Finn to the rear axle. The little black and white dog began to strain at the rope, barking and whining. Hush, Finn, hush. Lucy bent down and gave him a quick pat. Please, please, hush. I'll be back soon to feed you. Carrying the bucket, Lucy headed for the river. Each night, she helped her father check their oxen's hooves for thistles, small stones, and grass stubble that might become embedded in them. Lucy knew how important it was to take good care of the oxen. They could never travel all the way to Oregon without them. Lucy began scrubbing one of Sonny's hooves with soap and water when she heard her father shout, Get, get away! Get away, I tell you! She looked around and saw Finn bounding in and out of the oxen's legs. One end of the rope was around his neck and the rest was trailing behind him. Her heart sank. Lucy, I told you to keep that dog away from the oxen. Why do you persist in disobeying me? But I tied him up, Pa. I tied him to the wagon tongue. She heard a yelp and turned to see Finn limping away from one of the oxen. What did I tell you? Her father said gruffly. Before Lucy could reply, Miles ran forward and picked up Finn. I'll take care of him until Lucy's through with her work, Mr. Stewart, he offered. Thanking Miles with a small smile, Lucy knelt down and began to scrub again. Ever since they left Independence, Missouri, Pa had been so cross. Lucy knew it had to do with Ma. Ma was going to have a baby soon, and the motion of the wagon made her feel sick. She could scarcely eat anything, and every day she seemed to be getting weaker and weaker. Well, you can see what a lively and confusing place the wagon train was 150 years ago. Today, it would be even more so if hundreds of people decided to get together and cross the country in wagons. The wagon train would stay in one place for just a few days and then it would move on. Now, move on was a command Lucy must have heard a thousand times. No sooner would she get used to a place than they had to move on. And then once they were moving, it was catch up, catch up. That was the toughest job of the wagon master, keeping this wagon train together. Well, Finn being a lively puppy, it was bound to happen sooner or later. He got lost. And Lucy did just what you or I might have done. She went out to look for him. Even with the wagon train moving west and a storm coming up, she went out to find Finn. Raising a cloud of dust, a small herd of cattle, horses, and mules followed behind the last wagon. Lucy skirted the edge of the herd and ran along close to the river, hoping no one would see her. They could not have traveled more than a mile or two from the campground. It would be so easy to get there and back before anyone noticed she was missing. When she was far enough behind, Lucy left the riverbank and returned to the trail. A damp, cool wind began to blow against her back, pushing her along faster, but she shivered slightly. Across the river in the distance, she could see slowly moving brown and yellow spots. She knew they were antelope and buffalo grazing in the low, rolling hills beyond. They never came near their wagon train like the wolves. But sometimes at night, she could hear them howling. And ever since she saw how wolves had dug up a shallow grave, she had been afraid to look closely at the mounds marked by a simple stone or cross along the trail. She passed a prairie dog town. One little animal sat up straight 
watching her until she came very close to his burrow. Well, then he gave a funny high bark and disappeared into his hole. Well, Finn wasn't much bigger than you are when Uncle John gave him to me, Lucy thought. The wind blew harder, and Lucy stopped for a moment and looked back at the wagon train. Far across the prairie, she could still see the wagons, though now they looked like specks. The sky to the west was heavy with black clouds. Was that a drop of rain? She began to run again, forcing herself to go faster. The trail broadened. Ahead, she could see the campground, a wide area of hard-packed earth and grass, trampled by wagons, people, and animals. Finn, she called. Here, Finn. Here, Finn. She felt a sharp sting, and then another, and another. Hailstones. A clap of thunder rolled overhead. And now the hailstones began falling faster and faster, bouncing off her head and shoulders. They fell so fast that the ground was soon covered with the small, round ice balls. Lucy ran toward the river and crawled under the first willow bush she saw. Crouching down, she covered her head with her arms to protect herself from the pelting hailstones. What if the storm got worse? What if it didn't stop all day? Her stomach was in a tight knot, and tears began to roll down her cheeks. I can't stay here. I can't. I must start back. Water was running down her face, her neck. Her braids were soaking wet. She lifted her head. Oh, please, God, let me find Finn. Finn! Finn! Until this moment, she had never once doubted she would find her puppy. But now, she was not so certain. Perhaps when he discovered that the wagon train had left, he had run in the other direction. Perhaps he had spotted an antelope and begun to chase it. Or perhaps... Perhaps Pa had... Oh, no. Pa wouldn't do anything to Finn without telling her first. Finn! Please, Finn, answer me! Was, was that a bark? Or, or just a noisy rumble of the hailstones? Again, she called the puppy's name. She listened and heard something. It, it was an animal sound. She was sure of that. Lucy crawled out from under a bush and began to move toward the sound. Finn! Here, Finn! A real bark answered her call. Ahead, she saw something moving slightly under a gooseberry bush. Could it be? Oh, yes, 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 it was Finn. When he saw Lucy, he began barking and wagging his tail. Oh, Finn, Finn, what happened to you? Lucy was half sobbing and half laughing as she bent over him. The thorns on the gooseberry branches scratched her hands when she tried to pick him up. But the rope was wound round and round the bush, holding him fast. She hugged and kissed the wet, squirming puppy, and he licked her face and her ears. Well, Lucy found Finn, but now she's in real trouble. The wagon train has gone on without her, and it's going to be hours before anybody misses her. By that time, they'll be miles away. If you were telling this story, how would you get Lucy back to the wagon train? Why don't you try that? Then go to the library and see how Carla Stevens gets her back to the wagon train in Trouble for Lucy. <laughs>